Hi, you're with Scott. This is Battery Exhausted, my channel. It's midnight, it's always midnight. This is your right ear and your left ear because this is mono. Can you trust the AHA, the American Heart Association? So today I saw another spurious news story published in the mainstream media. Coconut oil is as unhealthy as beef dripping and butter, say US health experts. It's packed with saturated fat, which can raise bad cholesterol, says the American Heart Association, and in turn, the BBC. bbc.co.uk news slash health. 40300145. So, this is a worry to all the good people making better food choices. Should we really be rejecting animal flesh in favour of healthier options? To me, on the surface, this seems like obvious propaganda, an attack on the vegan movement. The vegan movement is growing rapidly and clearly threatens big industries that make their money selling animal flesh. Coconut oil is a kind of hero product to many vegans who use it for any and everything, from cooking to skin application, washing your hair and even brushing your teeth. It isn't a big leap to consider that producers of animal flesh products would want to discredit vegan ideas, because it helps their profits. Would big companies that rely on the flesh industry be prepared to spend lots of money to manipulate public opinion and misinform people about the health risks of coconut? That's coconuts. But the AHA, the American Heart Association, is a non-profit organisation dedicated to public health messages. Surely we can trust their reports. Would the AHA, the American Heart Association, be willing to take money from big companies in exchange for promoting propaganda? There is also some controversy surrounding the AHA, the American Heart Association, and their advocacy of statins. I'm no expert on statins, but let's just work with the chunky facts. They're a drug given to people at risk of heart attacks. Statins block the pathway for synthesizing cholesterol in the liver. The American Heart Association, the AHA, clearly has to address statins. Anyone would expect them to. As a non-profit public health organisation, people trust them to do fair and unbiased research and promote the ideas that are best for the people's health, regardless of business interests. So, a quick Google brought me to this informative article, which I had to cut the sides off because of overlapping adverts. Go ahead, see for yourself, but try to ignore the ads as they're exactly the kind of bullshit that I want you to stay away from. Oh, forget it. I bet there are loads of articles like this if you bother to look. I just took the first one I saw here. Quote, The American Heart Association, AHA, is a non-profit organisation with a mission to build healthier lives free of cardiovascular disease and stroke. Yet, in its 2011-2012 financial statement, the AHA noted 521 million in donations, that's $521 million in donations from non-government and non-membership sources, and many well-known large drug companies, including those who make and market statins, contribute amounts in the million-dollar range. The financial ties between large pharmaceutical companies, some people call it Big Pharma, and the AHA, the American Heart Association, are numerous and very remunerative for the AHA, including huge donations from Abbott, Bayer, Boehringer, Ingelhelm, Bristol-Myers, Squibb, BMS, Eli Lilly, I don't know these companies, Merck, and Pfizer, I've heard of that one. This article is in the Huffington Post, is by Martha Rosenberg in their health news slash uh, hyphen B4398304 HTML. They state, The AHA also rakes in millions from food companies, which are also million-dollar donors and which pay from $5,490. I don't know why they just didn't call that 500 and which pay from $5,000 to $7,500 per product to gain the heart check mark imprint Imprim, imp, what the fuck? Imprimatur. Imprimatur. I've never heard that one before either. Imprimatur. 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 They get the heart check mark for the uh, money that they give to the AHA. The heart check mark is renewable for a price each year. The foods so anointed have to be low in fat, saturated fat and cholesterol. Yet, boar's head, all natural ham somehow made the cut. What? 
as did Boar's Head Ever Roast Oven Roasted Chicken Breast. Birds who survive the grueling transport conditions are quickly and violently shackled upside down. The furious pace often leads to broken wings and legs. Management instructs workers to hang severely sick and injured birds on the slaughter line. Like broken legs, broken wings, doesn't matter, just hang it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You should hang one that you can die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> often chickens are carelessly left in the transport crates and sent through scalding hot industrial washing machines alive. Many birds are hung by only one leg, causing severe pain and stress. Once shackled, live birds are dragged through an electrified vat of water. This causes painful shocks, but doesn't necessarily render the animals unconscious before their throats are cut open. Such processed high sodium meats raise blood pressure, the risk of cardiovascular disease and the risk of diabetes. A review of almost 1,600, 1,600 in American, 1,600 studies involving 1 million people in 10 countries on four continents showed that a 1.8 ounce daily serving of processed meat showed that a 1.8 ounce daily serving of processed meat raised the risk of diabetes by 19% and of heart disease by 42%, end quote. So, can we trust the studies conducted by the AHA, the American Heart Association? It depends who pays for them, doesn't it? Can we trust the AHA, the American Heart Association, and the advice it gives out? Clearly not. They have a track record of taking money in exchange for publishing spurious ideas. That is shocking. People's lives are at risk and the AHA, American Heart Association, is spreading the wrong message for money. People who trust the AHA, American Heart Association, could be eating things that are actually going to increase their risk of heart attack. The AHA, American Heart Association, is prepared to use their position of trust to make money and risk the lives of the people who trust their advice. So when it comes to coconut oil, are the AHA, the American Heart Association, giving the right message or just saying what their sponsors want them to say? Can you trust them on this? I don't. Whilst it might not be Big Pharma on their back in this case, the flesh production industry is huge and very powerful in America. As I said at the start of the video, veganism is a huge threat to the personal wealth and power of some very rich people. People who are already prepared to pay the AHA, the American Heart Association, in exchange for a check mark. It's not rocket science to see what's happening here. Are most Americans at risk of a coconut oil catastrophe because they're all guzzling it by the gallon? No, they're already getting unhealthily obese from animal products and corn syrup. Well, we've been bombarded all day, every day by the food industry to consume more and more food. That's their job, make money, making us fat. I'm saying there's in the meat. That's another story. We're talking about the AHA, the American Heart Association, feeling it necessary to spend money slandering coconut oil rather than address the real issues that are crippling a nation's health. Fast food and soda. They need to get their priorities right. The most disgraceful aspect of this is that the BBC would publish this report from the AHA, the American Heart Association, without doing proper research into the credibility of their claims. Surely any good journalist would present all sides to this discussion. They'd look into the validity of the AHA, the American Heart Association, and expose the unethical practices that are fueling their press releases, rather than helping them to spread misinformation that could seriously affect the health of people. So, are the BBC also receiving money or favours in exchange for publishing one-sided stories? I don't know. Maybe they're just not very good at journalism. What about me? What about you? You've got Milky Joe. The man's an ass. 
Is he? He's really boring. He won't stop talking about Sartre. Come on, please. And I really like her. They do pretend to be conducting fair journalism by analysing the content of the press release, discussing whether the facts are accurate. But really, this is just more scaremongering as they don't draw any clear conclusions. I'm not pretending to be some kind of authority on saturated fat. This is not my argument. I'm clearly stating that this article is suspect because the journalist who wrote the BBC piece, strangely no names are given, has not examined the validity of the AHA, the American Heart Association, but has instead published their ideas as if they're a serious organisation worth listening to. You could say the AHA, the American Heart Association, is just a marketing company or a con. They take money from private companies and give unhealthy products the seal of approval as long as they get a financial reward. They claim to be not-for-profit, but all this means is that every penny donated or paid to them gets eaten up by their organisation. So they take big money from big companies to promote their products and split the profits between their staff and directors. There's still the matter of the millions of dollars in donations that are spent by the AHA, American Heart Association. Where do they go? Well, the majority goes on public health education. That means propaganda, doesn't it? I wonder what kind of companies profit from the AHA, the American Heart Association, spending. Marketing companies, I wonder. Marketing companies, probably. I wonder if there's any point tracing this money train and seeing where it ends up. Of course, I'm not a professional journalist working for a well-respected and supposedly unbiased news organisation. Any company who feels the need to spend so much money promoting their agenda is worth investigating especially a company who is apparently working for the public health, but spends more money on marketing than they do on research. Especially a company that accepts money from companies who they know sell products that are bad for your health. Is that a conflict of interests? I dread to think who's making the money here, where the millions are going and who is getting rich. Can you trust the AHA, the American Heart Association? You decide. Let us all know your thoughts in the comments. Feel free to share information, share this video. Of course, with all that money spent on public health education, it's possible that the AHA, the American Heart Association, might be leaving a few comments of their own. How much does it cost to run fake social media accounts these days? Donald Trump might be able to tell you. And that's your lot for this video. Be good, and if you can't be good, you're naughty. Get cold.